guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles, welcome to another Causal Inference Struggle. Today we're talking about propensity score matching. The idea behind propensity score matching is you have a treatment group, you have a control group, and you are trying to construct the best counterfactual for each person in your treatment group. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to match them up to someone in the control group who has the most similar propensity to be treated as each person in the treated group. We're going to use their result as the counterfactual for the treatment group. Timestamps are up below if you would like to jump around, but I think a motivating example is going to make this a lot more clear. So here is a motivating example. I've got a field of people. Unsurprisingly, our example is going to involve cats. Specifically, we're still looking at the effect of having a cat on your stress level. But what we have is we have a field of four people, Bill, Cat, Dave, and Barb. All four of those people have cats, and we are trying to estimate the effect of having a cat on your stress level. In order to do that, we need to find a counterfactual for each of those four people. We need to make our best guess as to what their stress level would have been had they not had a cat. And we have a bunch of people who did not have a cat. So we've got Esther, Deb, Susan, and all of their friends who do not end up having a cat. And we're going to try and use them as a counterfactual for the treatment group. Specifically, we are going to try and pair people up. So let's say that we look at Bill. We look at Bill's income. We look at his gender. We look at his age. We look at all the things that we can observe about Bill and we try to take our best guess as to whether or not we think Bill would have a cat or not. We know that Bill has a cat, but we're ignoring that and just trying to figure out what are the odds that Bill has a cat, given the observable characteristics that we know about Bill. Maybe we do that regression and we say that Bill has a 60% chance of having a cat. Then we look at this control group. We've estimated a similar score, a propensity score, a likelihood that we think each of these people who did not have a cat maybe would have a cat. So maybe Esther, we know that she doesn't have a cat, but again, we look at all the observable characteristics about Esther. We see that Esther has a 60% chance of being treated. We would guess there's probably a 60% chance that Esther would have a cat. So we say, great, Bill and Esther, you are super comparable. We think you each have the same likelihood of having a cat, but Bill has a cat and Esther does not have a cat. So when we're trying to make our best guess as to what Bill's stress level would have been had he not had a cat, well, we're just going to use Esther's stress level because Esther and Bill seem super comparable. We're going to do the same thing. So Kat and Deb, again, maybe they have a similar propensity to be treated or a similar propensity score, a similar guess as to the likelihood of them having a cat given their observable characteristics. For Barb, maybe Barb has two people that are closest to her in terms of her propensity score. That's totally fine. We can do that as well. So we're going to match Barb to both Katie and Casey. And maybe Dave also has two people he's super similar to, both Eden and Susan. So we're going to pair Dave to both of those people up. Maybe we'll just take an average of these two people's stress level and call that Barb's counterfactual. Maybe we'll take the average of Eden and Susan's stress level and call that the counterfactual for Dave. And we're going to use these counterfactuals again to estimate the treatment effect for each of these people. Then we can take the average treatment effect and we'll get the average treatment effect of owning a cat on your stress level. That was sort of hand wavy, so let's go ahead and go through these steps maybe a little more formally. So how are you going to calculate a propensity score? Well, you're going to regress whether or not you have a cat, which is a dummy variable, your X variable, your treatment variable, on your observable controls. And you're going to use that to predict your X value for each person in both your treatment group and your control group. So that's like that 60% that we estimated for Bill and Esther. We regress whether or not you have a cat, that dummy variable, that 0, 1 on your observables, and maybe for both Bill and Esther, we get 0.6. So their propensity score, their likelihood of being treated given their controls is 0.6. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take each treated person, we're going to match them to one or more people in the control group based on, again, those propensity scores. Once we've done that, once we've separated into our treatment or control group, we're going to do that balance test that we talked about in the last video just to make sure that those treatment and the control groups are actually comparable so that when we get our average treatment effect, we're pretty confident of the validity of that estimate. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use that sample now that we've confirmed that balance holds, balance on observables hold. We're going to use that sample and we're going to estimate our average treatment effect and we're going to call that a causal effect of having a cat on your stress level. As you might imagine, lots of people much smarter than I have come up with different ways to match people based on propensity score. Here are just a couple. You might see others, but here are just a couple that I think are helpful. You can do nearest neighbor, which I think makes the most sense, where you say, well, Bill has a propensity score of 60%. Who is the closest person in the control group to Bill? You use that person as a counterfactual. So in our example, that was Esther. 
You can do an exact match where you say they can't just be sort of close, they have to be exactly the same. And so this is helpful if you have a lot of people in the control group who are really close to one person in the treatment group. You say, I don't care who the nearest neighbor is, I just want an exact match. You can do optimal full matching where you say, okay, the difference between Bill and Esther is zero. And you go through all of those pairs that we had above. You calculate the difference between the propensity score of the treatment and the control person. You add those all up and you try to minimize that total number. So hopefully this gives you a little more background and helps you understand propensity score matching a little better. If this was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time for another case of econ struggles.